to really prepare the entire city and the state for a full and accurate count. So we really can't do, even though we of course appreciate the thank you and the token of appreciation from our partners across St. Louis, we really can't do the work if it wasn't for you all. And I need to acknowledge that all of you are the ones that are on the ground, getting the word out, hitting the pavement. So really thank you for everything that you're doing in such a critical time. Like I mentioned, last time we were in St. Louis, we never imagined that this would be the census that would be undertaken. So many things have happened on the census front from adjustments to all kinds of operations from an extension to now the shortening of the deadline to this new policy memorandum that was recently issued by Trump removing or trying to remove the number of undocumented immigrants from states apportionment counts. So today I'll be giving an update on all things census. Then I'll go ahead and let you all know what we can be doing in this critical time. You know, time is in fact running out. So we only have a couple of weeks to make sure that all of our communities are counted. And then of course, we will definitely make time to answer all of your questions. With that said, I did want to talk a little bit more about our organization. So for those of you who are not familiar, I serve as a deputy director to the National Census Program with the Naleo Educational Fund. Naleo is known for the work that we do on behalf of our association of Latino electeds at the local, state, and federal level. But we're also known for the work we do through our C3 where we're working hard to ensure that Latinos are involved in our political process all the way from things like citizenship to public service. So we've been working on issues around the census for more than 30 years now. This is our third and largest campaign on the census. And so we think that that is just such a critical part of our democracy. It is so important for our community. And that's why we carry out our national campaigns that are focused on a full and accurate count of the Latino community. As a part of that work too, we trained over 3,000 stakeholders just a couple of weeks ago. For those of you who weren't able to join us for our training, or if in fact you were there, I did wanna do a quick refreshing on the census, just because so many of the things we're gonna talk about in this initial part of our conversation are gonna tie really well with all of the updates that we're seeing. As you all know, it is part of our constitution to carry out a full and accurate enumeration. Our federal government has the responsibility to do so because this is how they are able to reapportion the seats in the US House of Representatives. And now this is how we're able to allocate so many resources. I do want to remind everybody that it is in fact very clear in the constitution that everybody needs to be counted. It says free persons. It doesn't matter where you come from, what language you speak, what your gender is. It is in everybody's constitutional right to be included in their census questionnaire. 
And now not only do they use this data to reapportion the U.S. House of Representatives, but it's also important when it comes to the allocation of federal funds. Over $1.5 trillion are allocated every year into more than 300 programs that are very critical to the state of Missouri and to the city of St. Louis as well. Through the census, we're also able to get really good data on different ethnic and population groups. And this is the data that our decision makers use to come up with the decisions they make on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the census is so important because if we don't have good data, then we can't make good decisions. And bad decisions impact everybody. So it's actually in our best interest that we have a full and accurate count. These are the top 12 programs that are funded in large part by census-derived statistics. As you can see, there, there is Medicare, Medicaid, things like highway planning and construction, Section 8 housing, and the grants and funding that is provided to schools, whether it be in special education grants or Title I grants to local school districts. Now more than ever, the census is super important, especially in the wake of COVID. A lot of us can very much appreciate how important many of these resources are to our communities and can firsthand understand the impact this data is having when it comes to emergency response management. Our public health officials use this data to figure out what their communities look like, who is in their communities, and where they need to allocate resources. And in second part, they also actually get the resources they need to respond to these moments. And so if we want to make sure that our elected officials have everything they need so that our communities are healthy, safe, resilient, and thriving. It's important to have these resources for current pandemic and future pandemics. And by us responding in the census is one way we can get there. I will quickly also share that our messaging has in fact changed. We know that Latinos are particularly being impacted at disproportionate rates when it comes to COVID. And once we make the tie between the importance of the census when it comes to COVID relief and COVID response, we are really meeting Latinos where they're at. We are really responding to the moment. And this is something that really resonates with Latinos currently. Latinos are one of the hard to count groups. I've included here a list of some of the other hard to count groups. You all may work with them. There may be some in your families. We know for a fact that they're they're all over Missouri and also St. Louis. And now given all of these changes, given that we are trying to get out the count in the middle of a pandemic, all of these things that people are hearing that Trump is trying to do to the census, these hard to count groups only get even harder to count. So now for, from our end, our work is really cut out. And so more now more than ever, we need to make sure that everybody is counted. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the specific concerns that we are hearing from Latinos when it comes to participating in the census. And as background, I do want to let everybody know that we have conducted two different sets of research message testing. We conducted one in 2018 to figure out what some of the messages and messengers were to really resonate with the Latino community and encourage their participation in the census. And Earlier this year, we released our second set of research message testing that was conducted in 2019. Through this research message testing, particularly in 2019, we wanted to see the impact that the citizenship question debacle had on the Latino community. Even though the Supreme Court decided to strike down this question, many Latinos, in fact, were concerned across the process and did not know about the final outcome. So through the research message testing we were able to do, we were able to really figure out the kind of impact the citizenship question had on potential Latino participation, particularly because we also had an oversample of Latino immigrants. So these are some of the concerns that we saw in 2019 and then both in 2018 and 2019. We could see from Latinos that they were hesitant when it came to sharing personal information you could have had somebody in the household who was okay filling out the form and sharing their own personal information. But when they were asked to share other information from other people in the household, that's when they thought twice about it. A lot of Latinos were also concerned when it came to online privacy. They were afraid what was going to happen to their data. They were afraid that their data could be subject to vulnerable attacks. 
And so that's why it was important to remind Latinos that the Census Bureau was doing all that they could to ensure that their data was safe and protected once they were able to share it online. Finally, Latinos also felt that the Trump administration was in a way trying to use the census against them. Many of them aired that this might be how Trump was gonna figure out who was Latino, was trying to figure out you know, where a particular immigrant community was. And so that's why it's important to remind Latinos that the Trump administration and the Census Bureau are very different entities. The Census Bureau is first and foremost a statistical agency. It is nonpartisan, apolitical, right? And was doing everything it could to get full and complete data about our community because of the role that this data plays when it came to Latinos. There is a couple of other things we noticed across both our 2018 and 2019 research message testing. In general, Latinos had a positive view about the census. They were like, hey, the census, you know, I probably did one in my country of origin. I think it happens once every 10 years, right? But when they actually saw a paper questionnaire, that's where you saw that there was some hesitancy and Latinos really thought twice about filling it out. That's why it's important to be able to highlight what is on the questionnaire and what isn't to make Latinos more and more comfortable. I did also want to share a little bit more about the self-response rate for Missouri, but also the city of St. Louis. So across the country, about 62.9 of all homes have self-responded to the census. Now, right in time, just today, we got an additional update that we are currently over 70% uh, response of response rates when it comes to the national rates. That is including, of course, this self-response rates that I shared with you all, but also the response rates increase that is coming from the non-response follow-up operation. In Missouri specifically, 63.8% of homes have responded. The Census Bureau does a really good job of providing up-to-date information when it comes to self-response rates, and I'll talk to you all shortly a little bit more about where you can find that. Now, what do these numbers mean, right? It is good that households across the country and across Missouri continue to respond, but we have seen that there has been a lag. Many, of, many communities across the country, there hasn't been too much of a shift when it comes to response rates. The number has in fact stayed at around 60 for the last past couple of weeks. And now that we are going into the non-response follow-up period, Whatever homes that didn't get counted during self-response, the idea is that the Bureau will start knocking on those doors. So even though it is good that these many people, these many households have participated, the Bureau really has their work cut out for them. And that means that they are having to count less, uh, sorry, excuse me, more people in a lot less time because the deadline has been in fact shortened to September 30th. I mentioned earlier that you can actually find current up-to-date information about self-response rates in your communities. You can either find that at the Census Bureau Response Rate website. I've included the link here. The City and University of New York has created another really cool Census Hard to Count map where it allows you to see data by state, city, and then it also allows you to look at data by legislative district and by track level. The legislative district data is perfect for any elected official that sits on any of the chambers. You can see there how your district is doing in comparison to some of these other metrics. And I'll make sure to send these slides after we are done today so that everybody can get access to these sites and the additional information. Now, there are so many challenges that we are up against and I joke with friends and colleagues that when you don't think that these attacks can get worse, they in fact do. And so I'm almost telling myself I should stop saying that because it only feels like I am jinx jinxing the census count. So one, just a couple of weeks ago, the Trump administration released this memo where they were saying that they we're going to ask the Census Bureau to remove the total number of undocumented immigrants from reapportionment counts. Why is this important? After everyone participates 
In the census, the Bureau has a process where they synthesize all the data and they get a report ready. This report, these numbers are then used by states to redraw their local, state, and federal districts. Removing the total amount of undocumented immigrants will mean that this lessens political power for Latinos and has a partisan benefit that is not in favor of communities of color. In addition to that, it just adds to the environment of confusion. What do I mean by that? When we conducted our research message testing in 2019, where we were trying to figure out the impact of the citizenship question, we learned that out of all the Latinos we polled across the country, over 50% of Latinos still thought there was going to be a citizenship question. We were working hard to let folks know that that in fact was not the case. We have regional managers who were working with partners to get the word out. Every time we had an opportunity to be on radio or Spanish language media, we would also share that information. And sometimes we would also get questions around, do I even get to participate if I'm not a citizen? And so you have this already pre-existing environment of confusion. And now Trump releases this new memo trying to say that undocumented immigrants are going to be removed from the apportionment count. That only adds to the confusion because now many people are feeling that yet this is another attack and two, that they don't necessarily get included as a part of this enumeration process. The thing with the Trump policy memo to know, a couple of things. One, it does not change census operations. Up to this point, I've already shared that more than 60% of households have been counted. That's a majority of the country. We can't go back to try to get additional information from that. I have also shared that there is no citizenship question on the census. The Census Bureau, in fact, does not have a process to figure out who is a citizen or not because they're not already asking that on the questionnaire. So there is no real way for the Census Bureau to remove the count of undocumented people from these apportionment counts. And three, the Trump policy memo is only a policy memo. It does not change the Constitution, which clearly already shares, like I have shared with you all, that everyone counts regardless of where people come from or where they were born or their lack of citizenship or their citizenship status. And like I mentioned earlier, um, the Census Bureau cannot go back and change anything. So in addition to that, through this Trump policy memo, the Trump administration is also forcing the census to rush the way that they collect this data so that they can turn it in on time. You know, four months ago at a Census Bureau conference, press conference, the Census Bureau had shared, hey, given everything that's happening around COVID and given that we've had to delay, pause, and push back many operations to say, for example, count folks who are experiencing homelessness, count college students, et cetera, we need additional time to be able to ensure a complete count of everybody. And because of that, we need statutory relief from Congress to get them these counts and to get states these counts at a later time. Even though the deadline had initially been extended to October 31st to then provide the Census Bureau with this additional time to do everything it had to do to collect and synthesize the data, now, the Trump administration has been pressuring the Census Bureau to complete all of the data collection and all the synthesizing of this data by September 30th. Now, what does that mean? We, I mentioned, we are already in the non-response follow-up period. For hard-to-count communities, this is where many of those are in large part going to be counted. And the non-response follow-up operation is one of the most important, if not most important, operations of the Census Bureau. They can't rush this operation because in that, we would be missing so many people. And anything that isn't 100% self-response rates is a bad census. And so this is an area that now groups like ours, our national partners, partners on the ground, are having to do a lot of advocacy around to ensure that the Census Bureau has additional time to collect and process the data, but then it also has additional time to get these counts to state for reapportionment. So I've talked a little bit about what we are up against, and it's really going to take all of us to continue working hard. Hello? 
hello? As much nice. as possible. So here are a couple to respond to the census. There are three different ways to respond, online, by phone, by mail, or in person. And even though that might be obvious to some of us, many of our community members still do not know how to fill out their census or where to do it. So this is a very important message to share. It's also important to remind everybody that there is no citizenship question or any kind of immigration on the census, that everybody counts, and that the policy memo does not change operation. In addition to that, now that we are in the non-response follow-up period, it's important to let everybody know that there may be an enumerator coming to visit them if they haven't already filled out their census questionnaire, and to let them know that they can still remember to self-respond. Just because non-response follow-up is happening right now, that does not mean that we close the online phone or that folks cannot send their paper questionnaire by mail. So super important to let folks know if they're not comfortable opening the door, that they can still fill out their census on their own accord. Finally, because of the advocacy right now that we are doing around extending those deadlines for the Census Bureau, we encourage you all to talk to your member of Congress, to your senator, and let them know that it's important that we not rush this operation so that we don't shortchange the census. Other than that, I do want to quickly share some resources. I know I'm getting to the end of time here. We do have all kinds of assets available for your use. You can actually visit our social press kit link to share some of these already written out posts for you all, whether it be on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. We do have a toolkit with all kinds of resources from social media posts to emails, scripts, and other kinds of really helpful materials. So we encourage you all to also check out all of our resources on our website. We have more information available that you all can use to stay updated in the loop of everything census. Things are changing so quick. So if any of you want to stay updated with the latest census developments, you can text us at census to 9779. Or if you want information in Spanish, you can text CENSO to 9779 as well. This is our website where you can find all sorts of resources and our chat box in case you have additional questions or you know somebody in your community who does. And of course, we do have a campaign right now where we are working to report misinformation. The thing with the census is that some bad actors in our community may be using it to take advantage of others. So if you ever see anything fishy, again, I'll share out these materials in this presentation afterwards. Please have them report what they are seeing, whether it be by using the QR code here, sending a text, or emailing us. Other than that, that is it from me. Thank you all so much for your time. We appreciate your ongoing partnership and your ongoing work. We have our work cut out for us, but hey, together, I think we can all make the difference. I'm happy to take, oh, and by the way, this is my contact information if you all ever have any questions, happy to be of service in any way. I'm happy to take any questions here. Thank you all so much again. Well, thank you. Adan, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. If I had to do it, I'd probably be out of breath, wanting a <laughs> second win. But you did awesome. You went right from the beginning to the end. I'm sure a lot of people just memorized, mesmerized with with the content and uh, your knowledge on the census. Uh, so uh, if you have questions and you want to do it by chat, maybe Alejandra Johnson, a board member, can uh, bring those questions up. First come, first serve, I guess, uh, on the questions. Uh, sure, sure, I'm happy to help. And then, uh, but before that, what I want to do is, Traditionally, Adan, in our face-to-face -face meetings, uh, we give every, every participant a chance to stand up and introduce themselves. Uh, at this point, that would take too much time to do it on our Zoom, but I want you to know that the people that are on here on this Zoom meetings, they're all leaders in their respective portion of the community. Uh, we have leaders from the Bar Association. We have leaders from International Institute, Mosaic Project. We have leaders, there's a couple of leaders that are here that doesn't give official titles, but are from uh, involved with the city 
uh, or involved with the county. So we're a very passionate community. We're united and we are very strong uh, in our leadership in this community. And we're very, very compassionate about our community. And uh, we welcome you to that. And I know that you're compassionate about what you're doing. So you just fit in right in with us. Besides, what high school did you go to? <laughs> I, wait, sorry, was that a question for me, Tony? <laughs> I went to school out here in California. So I'm not sure if you all would be familiar with it, but it's called John W. North. Very good. Thank you. They did a good job with you. Uh, it's a thing in St. Louis to ask people not what college, not what neighborhood, but what high school you went to. But, it makes total uh, sense now. Yeah, so uh, we have Alejandra E. Johnson, Esquire, she's on the board. We have Mauricio Gobo, he's on the board. Alejandro Santiago, he's with the membership of Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Ben Molina, he's with Alzheimer's Association. Beth Raza Edwards, uh, can you unmute yourself and tell us where you're from? What organization? Beth? Hey, good afternoon. I'm Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Very well. Hello. I'm with the University of Missouri Extension Office, and I work in the Jackson County area, but I'm working on a SIFAR project to reach Latino communities with Extension. Very good. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you were able to enjoy uh, Mr. Chavez's chat here. Uh, Mel Serrano. Mel Serrano is a staple in our community, uh, and we welcome you back again. Um, Carolina Hopmeyer, she is uh, with Viva Brasil, and uh, I think she's a past president or still the president of Viva Brasil. Uh, Donna Garcia, can you introduce yourself real quick and what were you organized? Sure. Organization? I'm Donna Garcia, and actually, I am a colleague of Beth. I'm with the University of Missouri Extension. Um, and college and career readiness is my um, area. I'm a state uh, 4-H specialist, and I live in the St. Louis area. Thank you so much, Donna. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we had Haiti Taylor Arnold, and are you on your phone still? Haiti? Yes, I am on my phone. Okay. Can well, you thank hear me? You. Yes. Very well. Who do you represent? Well, I am uh, President Alego of the Foreign Language Association of Missouri, and I'm also working on my dissertation related to um, Latino teachers, uh, how we can create system of support for them in the field. Thank you so much for joining us. Idalia McNulty is with CASA, which is St. Louis Community Action. Uh, Joanne D. DiMaggio May. <laughs> Hi, Tony. Hi, everyone. This is Hi. Joanne May, and I'm with the Illinois Small Business Development Center at SIU Edwardsville. We promote entrepreneurship and help entrepreneurs and small business owners here in Southwest Illinois. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And she is doing yeah, a... Italia, and, uh, I am with Community Action Agency of San Luis, and I am the person who speaks Spanish there, so... I was looking to um, see what other new techniques are there to um, make people um, do the census in, in California or anywhere. Very good. Idalia is also a past board member of the Hispanic Leaders Group. We have somebody by the name of Joe. That's all I get is the first name. I'm uh, one of the members of the Hispanic Leaders Group. Um, retired uh, military, retired St. Louis Police Department, and working uh, secondary right now. I mean, I'm sorry, working uh, security right now, uh, part-time. That's all. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. And Karen Aresti, uh, she is also a board member of the Hispanic Leaders Group. Karen, can you tell us who you represent? Oh. You're, you're muted. Good evening. I'm the regional director of the Anti-Defamation League for Missouri, Eastern Kansas, and Southern Illinois. And I appreciated your presentation very much. Uh, uh, so important. Thanks for the learning. 
Thank you, Karen. Uh, Keith Fuller he is with the St. Louis Community College. Go ahead, Keith. Keith, you're still there? He's muted. Keith, you're muted. Hello, how are you doing? Very good. Just want to let us know where who are you representing tonight? Absolutely. Keith Fuller, it's a great pleasure to follow my friend Karen Aristi. Uh, Keith Fuller from St. Louis Community College. I serve as the Director for Diversity and Inclusion. Thank Very you. Good, great Keith. presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Kevin Reyes. Kevin, you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, hi everybody. I'm here representing the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, the St. Louis chapter. And uh, I'm just grateful to hear all the, um, everything that you were presenting today, Adan, and I hope I can help with passing this on with our members and the community. And it's really important, I agree, everything that you presented today. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, on the list after Kevin, we have Moto G Power. <laughs> Hello, Moto. Can you unmute yourself? Hey, um, this is me, Sal. I'm having problems with my computers. Oh. Oh, okay, well, let's go on to Nancy Lisker. Please unmute Hi. yourself. Hi, how are you? Sorry, what was the question? I wasn't listening now. I just We were just introducing the, the people that are on Zoom to Mr. Chavez. Just tell us who you're representing tonight. Absolutely. My name is Nancy Lisker. I was born and raised in Mexico City, and I represent the American Jewish Committee, AJC. Uh, we have an Institute of Latino and Latin American uh, affairs in Washington, D.C., working very close with the Siegel uh, with Naleo. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next hey, Tony, I'm back. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is Sal Valadez. I'm a board member with the Hispanic Leaders Group. And I'm sorry, I've been having technical difficulties, but I've been listening on my phone and jumping back and forth on my computer. Uh, but I work for the uh, Laborers International Union of North America, the Midwest in Kansas, Le uh, uh, Laborers District Council, and they've got me on a task to organize a statewide Latino, Lat Latinx coalition on the census voting and vote no on three. I'm currently working with communities in Kansas City, Springfield, Branson, and St. Louis, I'm looking for contacts in Columbia, Wentzville, and other uh, communities around the state. So if there's anybody on the, uh, on the line here who has contacts or is interested in, in this effort, uh, I left my uh, uh, email and cell phone number on there. And Don, great presentation. And nice seeing all our friends here. Thank you, Sal. Appreciate that. Uh, next, we have another board member, Sandra Knight. Sandra Knight. Good evening, everyone. And yeah, I'm with St. Louis Community College. I am a, a faculty counselor, and I'm also a board member of the HLG. Thank you, Sandra. Nice and sweet. Thank you for the presentation. It was wonderful, and then. Next, we have Susan Gobo, St. Louis Mosaic. Susan. Hello, Hi. Susan. Hello. Hi, Tony. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, it's good to see you. It's good to see everyone. Good evening. And uh, thank you, Adam. For the presentation, I was in the training session, and it was great to see everything again. I'm here with St. Louis Mosaic Project. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Taylor Sneed, uh, one of our newest uh, hopeful members. Uh, Ms. Taylor, can you uh, please introduce yourself? 
Yes. Hi, I'm with Country Financial Insurance, actually, um, but I'm really passionate about building a bridge between my industry and communities that don't traditionally have great access to it. Thank you so much, Taylor. Uh, Suzanne Bollinger, please unmute and introduce yourself. She is also a board member of the HOG. Hello, this is Yvonne Bielinger. I work at Affinia Healthcare. It's a community health center here in St. Louis. And uh, importantly, at this particular time, I want to share that Affinia Healthcare is providing COVID-19, free COVID-19 testing in the community, a uh, number of locations. And uh, if somebody needs this resource to find out, please call 314-833-2777. Um, we're here to help the community. We have interpreter interpretation services, not just for this particular service, but for uh, the healthcare that we provide in the community. Uh, we serve approximately 4,000 um, people who are Hispanic or Latinx. Gracias, Yvonne. Thank you so much. Yvonne, if Yvonne could put the phone number in the chat, that would be really helpful yes. for folks. Thank you. Yvonne, can you do that? Definitely. Thank you. Uh, there's a phone number that ends in 5014. You want to unmute yourself, 5014, phone number ending in 5014. Phone number ending in 8419, are you available? Phone number ending in 7431. Okay, well, uh, that is the whole list. Adan, that is uh, some of the uh, leaders that I was saying that are so compassionate about our community and the work that they're doing. Uh, hey, you forgot me. Maria Yasik. Oh, here we go. We got a couple <laughs> more came later. Okay. Maria no, no, I didn't hear from the beginning, but you weren't there when I got it. Go ahead and Maria Jassy is also a board member, but she's a immediate past president of the Bolivian Society. Go ahead, Maria. Thank you. Uh, as, as Tony said, I'm Maria Yaksic, and I am here um, in wearing a couple's hats, as, uh, of course, as a Bolivian and a um, Bolivian part of the Bolivian society. But I'm also um, a, a founder of the organization Comunidad STL, and of course, um, here um, part of the Hispanic Leaders Group. But I do have a question for Adan. Now, uh, all along, we have heard all this um, rhetoric about um, that all um, illegals will not be counted, but um, this was broadcasted and, and put throughout the whole area in the media and everything, but never I have heard anything related to the fact that none of the questions relate to that there's no way, that there's no way he can eliminate that uh, illegals because that's not part of the census. I have not heard enough information except in the in the smaller circles that this is not possibly done. So I don't understand why we haven't done a better job of making sure that people that are um, afraid of um, participating in the census have not heard about this because I that I'm involved with the census I mean I'm all constantly listening to I have I have not been uh, receiving enough information saying, well, it can be done, you know, simple as possible. It's just simple. It cannot be separated. Yeah, thank you so much, Maria, for your questions. I would say a couple of things. So I think when it comes to the issue around the policy memorandum, what we have also seen has been incorrect information about it. I have, I have shared with you all that this, they're trying to remove undocumented immigrants from the reapportionment counts. That doesn't mean they're trying to remove undocumented immigrants from being counted, right? Important to remember that. I would say in addition to that, really sharing the message that everybody counts no matter what. Nobody in, the, this policy memo cannot change the constitution, right? In the constitution, it's very clear who gets counted and that's of course, again, everybody, right? And letting people know that at the end of the day, 
this is just one of those continued attacks on the census. And now more than ever, we all need to rise up and use this opportunity to be like, hey, I don't care what you all are saying. This is in my constitutional right. I'm going to be counted. Uh, Adam, I if I can step in right there, Maria, I think what you're saying is that uh, if we do plus and minus, right, if we got a lot of pluses on, on news media saying what Trump is trying to do and this new policy and all of that, and we keep hearing all this negativity, but, but and then where is our minuses against it? Where is the news media saying the things that Adan just said? How many times do we hear that repetition of that particular counter message on mainstream media? And I think that's where, Maria, is that kind of like where you're you're getting to? We On one end, we're getting all this negative uh, news about the policy, but we're not getting the counter message exactly. that he can't do it you know mm -hmm. so you know we got 30 spots of bad news and one spot of the good news that he can't do it exactly and just to add to that we already know for a fact that he cannot we imagine that when this does go to court it will be ruled unconstitutional and there's already a couple of lawsuits that are litigating what trump is trying to do there's a couple that have been filed by states because this is going to impact all states with immigrants negatively because it's essentially trying to take away their political power. And some other suits have also been fired by the civil rights community, right? So it's super important to stay in the loop with us as much as possible. We'll make sure to keep you all updated on the developments around some of these court cases. Very good. Okay. Thank you so much for the response. But what I'm saying is that I'm still encountering people that have not heard that message and their mm -hmm. biggest concern is if and when they can identify me as i've been a non uh, an undocumented why would i want to respond to this census you know this is what i'm i'm saying is that Got it. Uh, the fear is still there exactly. because we have minimize that fear yes we can we can say it's in your constitutional right yes he will be be rejected right. in the law uh, my concern is as an individual, let's say I'm the undocumented, my concern is myself and my family. If I am still fear, I'm not going to respond. Right, of course. And this is really the challenge that we are all up against, right? We are already trying to encourage people to get counted where there is so much anti-immigrant rhetoric and this only adds more fire to the fuel. So one of the things that we have been doing is of course, placing so many different radio ads, making a large investment on social media to get the word out there. It's important to remind people that their data is safe, private, and confidential, and that if we don't participate, of course, we don't get some of these resources back. It's really important, too, to make that message personal. We know that immigrant families really depend on so many different programs that are funded by census-derived statistics. Whether they have children or not, we all depend on this data in some kind of way. So really trying to be that trusted messenger and share that message that nobody will ever use their data. Thank you. Thank you. Mel, did you want to say something? Tony, I have a question. Go ahead. Idalia, go ahead. You got the floor. Yes, um, I wanted to ask you because um, my um, company also want to do more something like you were saying innovative to touch all these people that have not been responding. And I wonder if you have any ideas or any suggestions. Of course. And I'll just share some of the strategies we are undertaking now because these are the strategies where we have seen the largest return around our investment. So I already mentioned how radio ads can go such a far way in areas that are hyper-ethnic, hyper-local. In addition to that, we have already seen that once we place mailers, we have seen response rates in those communities increase, right? So if your company is interested in sending out a reminder and targeting a universe of households that have not responded, it's helpful to get this reminder response. And again, like I said, that's one of the things we're doing and that has been really effective and cost effective for us. In addition to that, so the radio ads from our end help us target Latinos above 40. 
we're, like I said earlier, we're also making an investment on social media for Latinos who are less than 40, right? So it's about layering some of these strategies. I didn't mention that, you know, a couple of weeks from now, there's going to be a seventh reminder that goes out from the Bureau. So not only is non-response follow-up happening right now, a couple of weeks from now, the Bureau will send another reminder and another paper questionnaire to some households. If they were to get this mailer and if they hear about the census message on radio, social media, Univision Telemundo, then hearing about the census everywhere is going to create this around sound system where more people are more likely to, to get counted. Like I said, these have been some of the most cost effective and strategies that we have seen our largest return around investment. And I'm happy to talk more to make some of these strategies a reality for you all. Thank you so much. Hey, Adan. Yes. Yeah, hey, thank you for your presentation. Th there is a question um, there on chat, if you would uh, touch base on that at, from your level and your opinion on that. Of course, thank you, Joe. And who did this question come from? Just to make sure I'm reading and answering the right question. I know there's a couple here yes. on the chat, but I want to get to the one I to get to. Uh-huh. It's the question from Kevin raised, right? How okay. do know if your efforts are helping? How do you know if you reach an 80% response rate or 90% or, or even 100% in our community? Perfect. So there's a couple of different questions here and I'll answer them one by one. First, I'll just start off by saying that I'm not a data nerd. So this is coming from someone whose data is not in our expertise. But what I have seen is that one of the things that people can do to monitor whether or not their work is having a difference is checking response rates before you do your work and then after, right? Like I showed you, there are two different maps where we can figure out who in our community or how many people in our community, sorry, how many households in our community have responded. So say, for example, you were to send out this mailer, you check the response rates today, you send out the mailer tomorrow, on, thurs on Thursday or Friday, you can check again whether some of those response rates have increased. Now, this isn't going to tell you if, in fact, your work made a difference because there are so many different factors that play a role in this. Maybe, maybe somebody got a message from the media, maybe somebody got a door knock on their door, and that's why they ended up filling out their census questionnaire, but at least that can give you sort of a gauge. And like I shared earlier, in order to be able to track response rates in your community, there are two different maps. There is the Census Bureau response rate map, and then there is also the city and university's hard to count map. Those are really helpful resources that can help you get very specific data about how many people in your community have responded. And I'll make sure to send this presentation out afterwards so that people can get access to those links. If I could say a few words on that, again, a great presentation, some great questions. Um, in the St. Louis metro area, at least for the St. Louis, region, the, the response rate <clears throat> is for both the county and the city. And I don't think you counted the, uh, the county, but their response rate, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, is close to 70%. And for the city, it's uh, close to 50%. And so uh, I, I want to go back to one of your comments about uh, the census and the strategies going on in the the, 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 this last stretch. And uh, uh, our partners that we're working with, we're going to roll out a final push. It, we're calling it the 30 day push, but it's actually 30, a little bit over 30. But it's going to be focused on uh, uh, social media, of course, doing the traditional things that everybody's been doing but people aren't answering their doors. People are scared, and that's a reality we have to live with. So what we've developed is a social media strategy and PDFs and images that people could share on their Instagram and on their uh, 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 other platforms, Facebook, et cetera. And uh, with our friend Ricardo Garza, who's on this board, we're developing videos uh, to post on social media also uh, in multi-languages, not just Spanish, but we're, we're using 11 different languages. 
uh, and, and focusing on encouraging people, as you said, to fill it up. If, 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 they, if they're afraid to answer their door and they haven't done it uh, on paper, the traditional way, to do it online. And so all of, all of those flyers will have all the resources, what languages can, you can do it online because it's not all of them. And then the 59 languages that, that, that uh, they have videos uh, on the census site and the uh, uh, questions and answers. So I'll be sharing that with anybody. My email is, is on the chat room if you want to receive this information. And this is going to be for the state of Missouri in conjunction with all the uh, complete counts committees. Uh, I want to interject real quick here. We have um, Ricardo Garza, which you just finished talking about, uh, 8419. Somehow uh, he can hear us, but but uh, he cannot talk to us. I don't know if the mic is bad or something, but um, he has also mentioned the same thing Sal did. They're going to be working on multi-language videos. Um, to include some of his uh, soccer uh, PSA videos, but he's going to be approaching the the Hispanic Chamber also to promote the census. He's working with Leuna. Just want you to know that Ricardo Garza is listening to us, but somehow he cannot talk to her. I mean, talk to us. So, he's Ricardo, a, if you're listening, he's a key uh, partner. Make he's some a, notes. <laughs> He's a key partner in our coalition. We talk daily, yeah. and so we, we're, we're trying to hit all cylinders at the same time uh, for the final push. So, Adan, I have another, um, pardon me, I have another question for Adan. Adan, um, my question is, um, as the, uh, as just the information that Sal just shared with us, that the city 50% response, the county 70% response. Considering that it appears to me, at least, uh, um, that there is a lot of political involvement in this census ordeal, is it possible that um, when they're doing the census, sending the census enumerators, are they making sure that there is a balanced uh, number of census enumerators uh, sent out, or is it are they focusing most mostly on the people from the county? Because if and when that is the case, you know we are still the minorities are going to be hurt. So exactly. my recommendation to Sal would be to please, if you're whatever budget you're using for your advertisement, please do it in the areas where there would be, we have the least um, response, and we know that there is a greater major minority people because. I have the feeling that um, census enumerators are going to be more inclined to want to go for safety and and all these other um, problems that they have with um, locations that they might not consider safe. They would be more inclined to go to the county area versus the city, and then, and in turn, our minorities will not be represented. Let me mm -hmm. answer that. Let me answer that, Adan. Uh, Charles Bindham who is the, uh, the executive officer for uh, the city's uh, CREA, the, 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 the civil rights, is the head of the Complete Counts Committee for the city. He's working very closely with the immigrant service providers and uh, uh, I'm part of that uh, with Emily Stewart, who's, the, uh, who's doing it for LifeWise for the immigrant service providers. Ethel Bindham, is the director of the Complete Counts Committee in, in, in the county. Uh, they have their own funding. Uh, and so I have no funding. I get the support from the laborers. And so I'm, I'm a partner. So there's allies, partners, and individuals who are responsible directly for the census. We are a partner. Uh, so in terms of Maps, I can provide those, uh, those count maps to you from, from Charles and Ethel. And, and so it's, it's, uh, we are very much aware of who the undercounted are, where they are by zip code, and they are, they are targeted. So it, it's a very systematic, thorough 
process, uh, but uh, between the, the politics of, of the current administration uh, and the fact of COVID uh, and for the Latino communities, because they, there are so many of ours, our communities who in our community who are testing positive, nationwide it's 20%, in the county it's up to 15%. So we're dealing with, with, with some strong headwinds, but trust me, we meet every week and it is data driven, and it is is data driven uh, that that uh, guides our efforts into those uh, uh, undercounted communities. So rest yeah. assured, the work's getting done well. I want to add to that that Charles reached out to me to request a couple of um, uh, Hispanic ladies to get on his podcast. And I've already sent email out, so now we're waiting for when that's going to happen. Uh, and again, it's going to be about the census and how it affects our community too. And I was, it was I was on the Chambers podcast yesterday, and all we did was talk about the census. Yeah. And in right now, the Hispanic Chamber of St. Louis has a challenge with the Hispanic Chamber of Kansas City to see who gets who who increases their accounts and and throws resources and people into, mm -hmm. into this process. And Gabriela Ramirez and uh, Lourdes Bailon with uh, St. Louis Juntos and, and uh, Car Carlos Ramirez with the Hispanic, Cha Hispanic Chamber are deeply, deeply involved as a lot of people that are here tonight. And like I said, you're gonna get, everybody here is going to get uh, all those resources and social media all we're asking you it is to be an active part and not just share it, but talk to your folks and tell them personally mm -hmm. how important this is. So I'll be I myself. had a comment. Uh, this is Rock from Kelly with the Latino Roundtable in Southwestern yeah. Illinois. So I'm currently doing the census. Um, I'm, I'm actually assigned the Southwestern Illinois part, but then after that's done, I'm going to ask the census if I could cross into Missouri because I know that this is uh, very, very tough. Actually, I could update you with the way it's being composed. Instead of a laptop, they've given us uh, a cell phone and I could show you a picture of kind of like what we're doing. So, if I, let me see if I, so we get a iPhone, if everybody can see that, um, census. Does everybody see my screen? Or, uh, yeah. Okay, so, so basically I go out and we're not going in people's houses. We're just going outside of their house or porch talking to them and they could do their ring uh, uh, security system. We talk to them, get their info. I know with the Latino community, it's going to be a little tougher. Like what we discussed about the trust factor and where, where is this data going to go? Um, but it's my job to present it the best possible way. And what we did discuss about, yeah, they do, they're rushing it. We're shorthanded. I'm, on my training yesterday, there was only two people and they expected 10. So pe even the enumerator, <laughs> Even the enumerators are dropping very out. scared. Mm -hmm. the enumerators are very scared to go to the training um, because you got to do past the training a week. A lot of people don't do that. You do an ex uh, like a final exam with one of the census higher ups, then you're able to go out and perform. And so I'll be driving all over the southern Illinois uh, counties, and then once I'm done, I'm going to ask the census if I could go into Missouri and finish that count. So. But if you have any questions about the census, uh, my name is Rock McCallion. I'm with the Latino Roundtable, uh, Southwestern Illinois, and I, I'm an enumer enumerator because I know this is a job that must be done, and we must count the people. Excellent, uh, Rafi. Thank you very much, Tony. We are going beyond the time, and uh, we have to respect the time of Ed and the others. So I will leave for you, Tony, to, to close this meeting. And hey, um, I'm sorry, Mauricio. Uh, Joe Caratero had a question. Can we have one last question from Joe here? It's up, it's up to Adam. Adam, do we have a little bit of time? Let's take it. I know that we've been meaning to answer Joe's question. <laughs> um, yes, so he had asked about the political power that the Hispanic community has or does not have. In other words, even with um, you know the census reporting issues, we know that uh, there are 47 million uh, Latinos in the country. It's the largest minority, and where is the political power? This year, first time ever, there will be 
more Hispanics eligible to vote than any other minority group? And where is the power at the the political power at the national level, especially? And this is a, a question that interests me as well because of everything that we're talking about, this fear mm -hmm. in answering the door and getting involved is something I think that is very, um, that's prevalent in the Latino community. And how can we, you know, you were talking about strategies and tips um, for getting counted, which are very, very important and obviously fundamental, you know, the federal funding and all of that. But what about activating ourselves politically? Do you have any thoughts on that with the tremendous work that you're doing in the census? Some overlap there. Of course, and I'll just say that, Joe, you are completely right. Across the country, Latinos are the second largest ethnic population. And in addition to that, we are this year the largest non-white voting bloc, which is huge. Earlier in my, in my presentation, I did mention that Latinos are considered one of the hardest to count groups which means that we've been traditionally missed on the census. In 2010, when it comes to just children alone, we forgot to count. So there was nationwide 1 million children that went undercounted. And Latinos were the largest percent of that, having forgotten 400,000 Latino children in the 2010 census. So because we are undercounted, that means that oftentimes our community does not get the political power we deserve. And we see that reflected in the ways they draw up our local districts that might disenfranchise Latinos and immigrants. And we see that reflected in the fact that some states might be getting less representatives in the U.S. House of Representatives as a result. I think with the census, it's super cool because it doesn't matter who you are, if you're 18 or not, or a citizen or not, you can all participate, right? And I think for Latinos, this is something we can all be doing no matter what. And it's super important that we get counted right now because we've already seen that Latinos think that it is inconvenient to be visited by a Census Bureau enumerator, right? And every time that Latinos are not responding for themselves, this takes us away from having full and accurate data about Latinos. So we won't really be able to know which Latinos are discriminated when it comes to housing, education, voting rights, all kinds of things. So for Latinos, it's important to use the census as an opportunity to be involved in this political process. And then afterwards, I think we just need to keep building the momentum. And this may come from the people on the call, but this also comes from political parties. They just need to be investing in Latinos. Latinos oftentimes do not vote, which means that we are not worthy of investment. But hey, if you don't invest in us, then we are not going to vote. So now that demographics are quickly changing and that Latinos are becoming such a large part of our fabric, it's important that more and more we're thinking about how to do outreach to Latinos in an intentional way. And that's what I will say to Joe. Wonderful, okay. that's great. That's wonderful. So again, we don't want to take too much time. I know Adan, you have nothing better to do, right? <laughs> I can talk about the census all day, every day. So you all let me know. <laughs> census so, nerd right here. So, but in consideration of the time, we're like nine minutes over. So the last minute, I just want to say, uh, I was going to piggyback on Rafi's comments about enumeration. There's a lady on the St. Louis side, Ana Delgado, who has been recruiting or trying to recruit Hispanic or bilingual enumerators and uh, I'm going to put her phone number in the chat so that before we leave uh, you guys can take a look at it uh, but I'll also repeat it out loud uh, oh it, where did it go oh doggone it uh, I'll find it and put it in the chat I just had it in my hand but um, bear with me a quick second her name is Ana Delgado. She works directly for the census. And her phone number is 314-960-4450. 
314-960-4450. She's the recruiter on the Missouri side and they're paying very well for what she says. They're paying very, very well. So with that, uh, if anybody has any burning desire, last question, please do it now because we're gonna bring this meeting to a close. Oh, oh wait a minute. Adan, a round of applause for Adan. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. He, he, uh, Tony, I get a, I get a message from, uh, I think it's Donna, uh, two folks from, I can't find it now, uh, from Kansas City. I, I will be in contact with them. So okay. thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. We're good, Adan. Good. Gracias. Que Dios te bendiga. Thank you all so much. Take care. Gracias. Y cualquier cosa nos avisan, eh? Bueno, no, just... Thank you so much, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Gracias. Thank you, everyone. Adiositos. Adios. How are we going to get the, the slides? Where's Ken going? Ciao.